Hello, today we're going to be looking at the Lulzbot Taz Pro 3D printer and we're going to be printing robot parts with dual extruders. In the box of course we've got the printer with the other axis we need to bolt on in a second. We've got the getting started guide which pretty much tells you everything about unboxing it and setting up the printer. A Lulzbot sticker. A Lulzbot toolkit containing all the tools you need for your printer, two cables, the power cable, in fact it came with three for different regions, and the USB cable, some sample filament and the filament guides, and also the quality assurance list including the packing list and uh, various bits of paper saying that tests and things have been signed off before it was shipped. So the bed just screws in with four screws here and another two at the back. At the back of the printer we need to connect this stepper motor to the two cables that are attached to the other part of the chassis which is a bit fiddly but can be done. They just plug in, one is the stepper motor and one is an end switch. Next we need to attach the cable chain for the bed which of course moves onto this screw point and the screws in the hole so we just need to put this in and pull it up nice and tight. And of course connect the cables. So I've inserted filament into the printer as per the quick start guide and now we can look at the new features of the printer. The main features of the printer are a colour LCD touch screen instead of the old knob you had to turn with the LCD. We've also got a USB socket now for a USB key to put files on instead of an SD slot. Of course the printer comes with dual extruders now by default and both of these are E3D Titan Aeros. And the good thing about this arrangement is each nozzle will actually lift out of the way when it prints with the other one and that's going to stop ooze and give us a much cleaner print. And we've got hardened steel nozzles fitted as default, so we can print abrasive materials. The printer of course has two filament feeds and it has two filament out sensors, which makes sure the printer will stop if you run out of filament, rather than coming back in the morning after a long print and finding it ran out and the prints failed. And of course, as with the other TAS models, we've got the wiper strip for cleaning the nozzle and we've got the corners here where it touches each corner to auto level. There's also an additional block here and I believe it touches the sides of the hot ends and that gets rid of any backlash in the other axis. Now you'll notice on the Z-axis there's no lead screws, in fact we've got a toothed belt here so the Z-axis is belt driven and that's the same as the Lulzbot Mini 2 and it works pretty well. And one quite big improvement on this printer is the controller is now 32-bit unlike the other previous models which use the Rambo board based on the Mega 2650 which was only 8-bit.
So there's the finished print. It's pretty tiny compared to my finger, so it's got a tiny octopus on it. But everything else seems to have come out pretty well. All the colors are aligned and I've got no bleed there. Now, I did of course use the purge towel for this print that you can see at the back here, which just basically purges the filament in between color changes to get the best quality. That makes the print take a little bit longer and for the next print, I'm not going to use it. If you've been watching my channel, you know I'm doing quite a lot of robotics development. And one of those ongoing projects is a project called Open Dog, which is an open source dog robot. Now I've got quite a long way without doing a kinematic model and getting all of the controls sorted. The problem I'm having is making it compliant and dynamic enough that it can move quickly because its legs are driven by ball screws which are very rigid and that causes a problem when one hits the ground and it pushes the whole dog around. So I've been doing some tests with some other types of legs which are actually back drivable. They have a motor with some holding current holding them in position but we can still force them to another position which makes a virtual spring. And I've been experimenting with dampening that spring using various controllers and I made a dog which basically I could hit with a broom and it looked really dynamic. Now unfortunately it wouldn't hold its weight up due to the back drivability of the joints and the weight of the dog. So I've then gone on to make another version which is completely 3D printed. It does have some aluminium extrusion in but most of the parts are much lighter due to them being made of plastic. So that dog does support its own weight and at the stage now where I need to make the feet for that dog. So what I'm going to do is use dual extruders to make hybrid feet with a rigid piece encapsulated in a flexible material. And by varying the infill of various regions of those materials, we can get a different amount of compliance. And what I actually want is a little bit of bend so that I can measure the distance of a little wedge that I've cut out in that print. And we can use a magnet and a Hall effect sensor to see how much bend and how much pressure is on that foot. And so we can sense that the feet are on the ground. So for that print, I'm going to use ColorFab PACF, which is a high tensile strength, low warp material. And it requires a hardened steel nozzle we find on the Taz Pro. And that's going to be encapsulated in NinjaFlex, the actual really flexible NinjaFlex. NinjaTech do make some other products, including a rigid product. So I've brought all my STLs into Cura here and we can see them on the bed. Obviously, they're in the orientation. They came out of Fusion 360 and we can assign each one to a different material for the hot end. So I've assigned the main part to NinjaTech and the other two parts to the ColorFab PACF. And we've got a smaller piece as well, which is there to hold the magnet. So that's got a little recess in it. To merge the prints, all we need to do is right hand click and do select all models and right hand click again and click on merge models. And that should put it into one piece. So after I've sensibly arranged the parts on the bed, we can now see we've got various colours coloured in for each type of material. And we can see what's in each one on the menu on the top right. If we go to layer view, we can then look at each layer and we can see those parts nicely printed in each material and one encapsulated in the other. And I'm using a 0.3mm layer height here for both materials. And here it is, so that's all finished. And we've got quite a clean print there with the Ninja Flex, of course, on the outside and the rigid areas printed in and bonded in where the dual extruder switched extruder on each layer. So uh, that's pretty clean. Obviously, we've got this overhang here where I did have support material like this one that I haven't taken out yet. And that's left quite a nice clean space there for the dog's foot to be inserted in. And of course, the plan is we put a magnet in that little recess Got a couple of screw holes, and in fact, the dog's foot that I've got there, the leg inserts in there. So we'll put a Hall effect sensor on, and then we can measure the bend, which isn't very much, but it's quite a heavy dog. So I think that's going to do just about okay. Yep, that seems to fit pretty perfectly. So all that needs to happen next is we need to cut the broom off, of course, which was just for bed adhesion, and then bolt through into the leg. And I've left the corresponding holes there in both pieces. We can fit the Hall effect sensor to the rigid piece there with those little screw holes I left. 
and that'll allow us to measure the distance from a magnet and at least sense when the foot is on the ground. So obviously I need four of these feet for my dog and so far I've only done two and each one took one day 16 hours because you have to print NinjaFlex quite slow because it's flexible and it doesn't grip in the extruder properly otherwise. So there'll be more about the robot dog in another video. So for now don't forget to subscribe if you like the video and check back for more updates on robot dog development and various other robots that I'm building.